Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing. Now this time we're going to take you pike fishing, we're going predator fishing down on the Dorset Stour, a place called Throop Fishery. Conditions are looking good, weather's a bit iffy, can't grumble really, got to take it as it comes. But what I'm going to show you is a different technique, it's called twitched sprat. I don't think many people use that nowadays, and I used to use it loads and it was pretty successful for me. It's dead easy, cheap and cheerful, and all you need is one rod, eight, nine foot spinning rod, fixed ball, reel, with or without the bait runner attachment, doesn't really matter. Now, I've got a 15 pound line on here because I don't want to get bust off and I certainly want to be able to pull out of any snags or weed beds, that's why I've got the heavy line. And then I just make my trace up here, and it's made up probably a little bit different than all the treble hooks you'd normally see. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay, now here it is, it's quite simple. I use 27 pound wire, just regular cabled wire, don't use single strand, and I use these hooks, and you can see that one. Now they're called, I think they were invented by a gentleman's name, Vic Bellas, a pike enthusiast, and they used to be made by Partridge, I don't know who makes them now. It's called a VB double hook, that's what I call them, because it's a standard hook, but instead of the treble, it's got a holding, a bait holding hook on the top here, and that's important, because the trebles can be really difficult to get out of a fish. And then I've got my front hook, just like a size two carp hook up here. Maybe as you can see, what well, I'm measuring on the size of a sprat, say about three inches. This one's tied, that's actually knotted, obviously this one is, but they're both fixed, they're not sliding, and I can, I can just wrap that around the shank like that to make, make it rigid. But I also use a shot here, which I can slide down, just to give me weight of about a big swan shot, or the biggest swan shot you can get, I like to use really. And uh, let me show you how I put the sprat on. Okay, now look, this is quite important. This is quite important. You want the sprat as straight as you can get. You don't want it all mashed up and when you buy them in a bag. Now, that's come out the freezer, that's still barely frozen. The big single, I go right through the latch, the throat latch of the jaws, between the eyeballs, out through the roof of the mouth. But you've got to get it to come out straight. If you don't get it to come out straight, like that, it's going to twist. And then, this bait holding hook comes around the back and just nicks in the top. You can just see it nicking in the top, just there. So the big main hook, the main, the main single if you like, although it's a double, is clear. So I've got a, a hook here which takes the strainer casting and then I've got this double hook which one goes into the bait and one is sticking up clear. That's all you need for pike and I'm actually getting away from treble hooks now to be honest. Uh, the main point is you don't want it bent. You don't want it bent like that, it's going to spin, spinning doesn't do it. It's got to be flat because you want it to flutter. So make sure that hook is dead in line there. Then all I do is I slide my shot right down onto the eye of that, and there basically I'm ready to go. But I'll tell you what, I found an ingenious way of keeping these baits straight. And it was shown by, by the guy in the fishmonger shop that I got it from. Well, the supermarket was Morrison's. So I went in there and the guy said, you want these for fishing? I said, yeah. He said, tell you what I'll do. I'll buy, I'll, 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 I was buying a load of them, about four pounds of them. He packed them down and he rode them individually like this. Now I was always taught with cling film to wrap each one individually, which I, I used to do that, so they don't get what they call freezer burn and the tail burns off with the freezer burn there. But I've just used these before in the last two or three weeks for some experimental fishing, and I'll tell you what, they're really, really good. So we're gonna give them a go uh, fishing for these pike on the stour, and as you can see, they've been frozen, they've got a thaw out yet, but where he stacks them like that side by side, a really good, convenient way to pop them in your freezer, one on top of the other, take a pack out, there's probably what, two dozen baits in there, that's gotta be enough for a session, I know. You can't say that was a difficult rig. A sprat, a swivel, shot, up here number 10 swivel, about 15 inches of wire trace, you don't wanna bite it through, that's enough of the tackle talk. Let's get down to the river, let's see what we can do. Well, you've seen how to fix those sprats up and you've seen the rig I use. So we're down on the river, we're gonna put this into practice. It's not the greatest conditions, I have to say, it's just very, very slightly off colour, but we'll give it a go. I'm going to put this little chappy in as many hot spots as I can that I know the pike should be living. Now one is by an overhanging bush. You cast past out into the mainstream, let it swing around under the bush, and just pop it back slowly. It's a classic spot for a pike. I just had a take straight away, about fifth or sixth cast. Don't leave them too long before you strike.
we go. First fish of the day, probably about five pounds. And it's real easy, as you can see, just get in the bend, in the scissors there, pop, hook is out. That shows you that twitch rat works, but I'll tell you what, I've got a feeling there's a bigger one on the way. So get rid of your trebles. Get these doubles and singles out there. Nice fish. I just seen one with a polaroid, it's a really, really big fish. I've dropped it, he sucked it back, I'm gonna hit him. Be a touch bigger than I thought. Why do I fish these places? Oh, that's a good one. There we go. I'll tell you that fish just around about the 10 pound mark. Maybe nine, maybe nine, nine to 10 pounds with a belly on it. Later in the winter, it'll be a bit more. So that's three fish hooked on sprat, two I got. This method works, trust me. Oh, this one feels like a good fish. This one feels like a really good fish. Just keep him out the snag. Oh no, he's good. The trouble is they go into the side, they go into the margins. They pick up a tree root or anything, I'm really stuffed. He's got one, fuck it. No, he's in the middle, he's going in the middle. I need a bit of luck. This is the one we want. This is the one. On Twitch, Brad. 100% a double. And there, this one's easier double. Look at the hooks. Just that single pop, it's straight out. And that, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a double, and I think that's worth weighing. That one. 12 and a half. 12 and a half pounds. What a beauty. Right under that tree that I told you about, just fishing in there. It's a cracker. This is a killing method. Twitch sprat. Oh man, it's on fire. Well, I've just come just below that that bush. It was I didn't get anything on the upstream, but I've come to the downstream side, and there he is. He's just taking a little bit of line out. I'm going to wind down, and hopefully another fish. Ah, small one this time. He's on though. And they're all good, they're all good. 
That's number four. You can see the method work. Oh, he's not that small. He's out in the middle now. Still going. Still going. Still going. Still going. There he is. I've got a log or something, a piece of twig around it. Man, what a scrapper. This is river piking. River piking at its best. Even with half the river, the weed and a branch on the end. There he comes. I thought it was about three pounds, it's bigger. Oh, let's get some of those twigs off. I like it. He's coming out, he's gonna come out, he's gonna come out. Is another fine pike on Sprat. Uh, shit. About eight or nine, eight or nine pounds. And look at the mouth on that. Even the fire alarm's going off over there, or the ambulance. Beauty. Let's get it back. Now here's a tip if you're in a tight spot, rather than overhead casting, you open the bail arm, leave a long drop to the bait here, length of the rod, and you swing it out and accelerate the line pulling it with your left hand. So as you swing the rod outwards, you accelerate the line from the butt ring, just here, just there. I'm going to accelerate it and I can shoot a line without any overhead cast, three quarters of the way across the river. A flick and a pull at the same time. I just demonstrated that cast. This is the honest truth that I've got to take. Just as close as the bail arm. Absolutely as I close. I'm going to hit this one really, really early. And I'll show you if these hooks work. This is how quickly I can strike. He's just literally taken it. <laughs> it's on. It's on. Trust me. Straight to the camera. There we go. I don't know how many pike I've got to get, get for you guys so that you get the message. Twitch Sprat does work. Mobile, keep moving. Six, eight cast each with move, move, move. There's another one. This is numero nine. Can you believe number nine? It's raining. I'm getting a bit wet. I've got a miles walk back. Trust me, I'm going to have a fish on the way back in a couple of pools I've seen. If I do, we might get lucky. But there it is. Yet another addition of. Totally awesome pipe fishing.
we got another take guys on the way back to the car couldn't resist going by this bush oh it doesn't feel bad fish oh no he's skipping me he's skipping me in the middle of the lake oh thank god he's going out the middle thank god this is not a bad old fish oh come back come back come back He's going absolutely pouring up the upstream, upstream. Good, look at this, this could be a real biggie. Another one. I'm on again. I'm on again. Right by that bush. I cannot be. Oh, it's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, he's going underneath. Oh, man, he's dummy in the bush, I think. Hook's pulled out. This tree, this overhang, must be absolutely loaded with pike. I cast out again after losing that big tough one. I've got another take. I've no idea. I think it's a small fish. You can generally tell whether they bang it. They're a little bit more sort of aggressive, if that makes sense. Let's get ready, we give this one a whack. Oh, he's on. He is on. I'll tell you what, doesn't feel a bad fish again. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, he's. Oh, no, no, don't go down. Don't go down. Oh, this could be a double. This could be a double. Oh, please, how am I going to get him up there? Oh, I'm, in, I'm in trouble, guys. I'm in trouble. No, I'm in trouble. In big trouble. I'm absolutely stuffed. Jesus. He's gone through the bush and out the other side. I'll switch off to see what I can do with him. I think he's stuffed. He's come out. He's gone round the other side. I've got to get him up. Yeehaw is the word, guys. It's a lunker. It is a giant, giant pike. I just hope we've got enough film left in the camera. I'm going to switch it off while I weigh him up. Oh, I'm bloody exhausting. Oh. There you go, it is. 15 pounds, 6 ounces. <laughs> Come in, number 12. Your time is up. And I can assure you, inside that mouth, never mind about a sprat, you could put a full fiesta parked in there. Beautiful fish, 15, 12 and I still haven't got back to the car to get home yet. Ooh -ha! It's stupid, guys. It's really stupid. I've got another take. Oh, it feels like a good fish. I'm going to have to switch the camera off because I'm nearly out of battery. I'm out of memory. I'm going to switch it off. If I get it, I'll show it to you. <laughs> there you go. About nine pounds, ten pounds. Pike number 13. And the bad news is, for my wife, I've got sprats left and I'm not coming home yet. Sorry. <laughs>